Hey guys, welcome to Makers on Tap, the podcast where makerspace directors drink and talk about making stuff. Tonight, you just have me, Joe. Aaron and Christian both had to work and work on the makerspace, so they're out for this particular interview special edition, but you have me. So in this one, we're going to be interviewing Kurt Chan from Autodesk. Now, I know there's a ton of uh, interest right now in what's going on with the future of Autodesk, especially with the licensing changes and the kind of dynamic changes that are coming up in the next few weeks. So Kurt and I sat down and talked about this at IMTS, both talking about the changes that are coming up and uh, what is kind of in store for Fusion in the coming months. Um, this was a really good chat. And um, I'm really excited for the things that are are, are happening. Um, for those that don't know, I am a huge Fusion advocate. Uh, I stumbled across Fusion a few years ago when I was starting an open source 3D printer project that I needed a tool that I could not only share STLs from and you know give everybody the open version, but I wanted to be able to give people my source files so they could do really good edits and make this printer usable for themselves. Now, when I was looking for the CAD tools, I dug through all the usual suspects that you'd expect to see. I played with SketchUp. I played with Tinkercad. I played with... Open SCAD. What else did I mess with? I, I used a, a software called Design Spark Mechanical, which is actually a super good tool. Um, I messed with all of the high end engineering grade CAD pa packages like SolidWorks and Creo and all of those because I use those for my job. And, you know, over all of those, I, I ended up settling on Fusion because it, it gave me the flexibility that I needed and the ability to share out the files that I wanted. But it did have a bit of a learning curve. And uh, I had to change my workflow a little bit. And we talk about that stuff in the interview. I will warn you guys, it does get a little ingenuity heavy in the beginning. Um, sift through the first few minutes. Uh, if you're not super into pro-level CAD packages, I promise it gets more fun towards the middle. Uh, but after that, I will recap it a little bit afterwards. So with that, this is the interview with Kurt Chan from Autodesk and Fusion 360. All right. So this is uh, Joe again at IMTS. And I'm sitting here with uh, Curtis Chan from Autodesk. And uh, Curtis at least used to be the technical evangelist for Fusion 360. That's how we met uh, two or four years ago at IMTS now. And uh, yeah, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, Joe, thank you. You know, it's amazing how quick time flies, right? I see you somehow every year, it seems like, or, you know, maybe social media today makes that perception of seeing you every year or yeah. every every month or every hour, really, yeah. right? So, you know, here we are at IMTS once again. Uh, this is our sixth time as Autodesk being here. You know, we, we came back, we started in 20. I believe 2014 is when okay. we actually first got that one kicked off and we were back as a full booth. But, but yeah, you know, background wise, you know, I was a technical evangelist for four years. You know, I getting out there, selling the product, uh, used Fusion 360 and, you know, the cam side when we called it cam 360 yeah. and it wasn't yet integrated yet. Right. Yeah. Uh, and we had people and customers out there like uh, Jeff Hooper from Backhand Bikes using this product and seeing the potential and customers like yourself seeing the potential where we're going in the direction. So it's great to to see the evolution of a product, right, over right. the past four years. And now, you know, this baby has kind of grown and, and, and running now. And now, you know, as as what we do is you were here still to feed the community and help the community and build that, that local community. But this product has gained so much momentum that to where it, it can now drive the user base and drive the clientele to use more of the product. Yeah. Yeah, so um, to give you guys a little bit of background on how I found Fusion, um, I'm a 15-year uh, Pro-E user and uh, through uh, school and professional life. And I wanted a CAD system that uh, not only gave me the ability to model, but gave me assembly abilities and uh, cam 
and I, I went on this search for a very long time because the other thing I wanted it to be was accessible. So the first real solution that I found was called Alibre. And Alibre was a great CAD software uh, until they were bought up by another company and um, you know, taken from a price point that was accessible from a user level, not necessarily a company level, and uh, put back at the company price point. Um, and then I started this, uh, this search and ran down, um, boy, I can't even think of them all, uh, but some key ones that, that came to mind were um, Space Claim mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, of course, FreeCAD, yes. which is, it's FreeCAD. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's venerable that they're doing what they're doing. Um, and uh, you know, eventually then I came, to, came across Fusion. Mm -hmm. And um, it took me a little bit because Fusion's workflow was so different than mm -hmm. Creo. But once I grasped it, I, I just ran with it. And, and the things that really stood out to me were uh, true assemblies, uh, unlimited component assemblies, basically as much as your computer could deal with. And at the time, I was also a CNC programmer for uh, Caterpillar. So I was in machining research, and I used I touched every CAD or every CAM package out there, pretty much, from uh, uh, Pro NC and NX to Master Cam, Bobcat, uh, Dolphin Cam, like everything, everything yep. that drove a toolpath, I tested, yep. and then. Um, four years ago. Uh, I came to the Autodesk uh, student experience, and you guys had a cam station set up where you, you programmed the part, and then you went and ran the part on a little Haas mini mill. Mm -hmm. I remember that. I, uh, I, I was programming on my laptop on the drive home. It was like, this, this cam is amazing. Yeah. Compared to the professional level cam that I'm using, compared to NX and all of those, this cam is spot on. Yeah. It's easy. And every tool function I want works. Yeah. So, it, um, you know, just to add to that, Joe, it's, you know, m my background is an Emmy, you know, so uh, I came from the Northrop Grumman's and the Lockheed's doing Emmy work with Katia and so forth. Yeah. And, you know, I, I took a switch in career to, as an application engineer, and I, you know, I spent a lot of time on SolidWorks and, and Space Claim is what you brought up, right? You know, when I, when, we, when I came over to Autodesk and got put on this newer product, you know, when Carl Bass was the CEO, it was interesting to to really understand not only the tech, right? Mm -hmm. Because here you're starting with a, with a new product, so it's not going to be as mature as some of these other ones that you're familiar with, right? But the cam was was very mature, right? Because it, it was from an acquired company called HSM Works that yeah. you know we took and we built for Inventor as well as for now Fusion. And when I look at the the tech, <clears throat> not only from a technical side. Uh, what was the change in the world was the business model we had. Yes. That's the biggest part. That's the, that's the key. And I think that's the, yeah, the point you want to get to is now it's accessible for entrepreneurs, startups, free for education. But most of all, even if you ran a business, the price point of, I think at that point was 25 bucks a month yeah. or something. I forgot that price point then. But you look at that price point of $300 a year, I believe, to, to do CAM and you know, CAD and simulation yes. all in one product. And people were very, and it ran on a Mac too, yeah. right? So, huge. so this was a huge thing four years ago. when Still we, doesn't run on Linux. Yeah, right, <laughs> you know? Uh, we, you know, have our browser base, right? You know, coming yes. out I'm gonna, and with data. We'll I'm going to poke that. you about that. Yeah, so, you know, you look at what we've done through a pricing and packaging standpoint, what we're doing, you know, come in October with now at $500, you get everything, yeah. which is generative design, which we release. So it's just one tier fusion now. And, and how is that going to be a disruptor in the market? How is that going to be an influencer in the market? Yeah. These are the things that we're thinking about because, you know, people how always has that perception on price, right? Oh, if it's if it's cheap, it's not good. Or yes. if it's this, if expensive, it's great. And you know, we've really set the precedence of look, like this is the business model change. This is where we're moving as a business. We are uh, a big goal of us is moving digitally, but moving to the subscription model. Yeah. Just like how Adobe has done it, right? Yeah. They did it with Creative Cloud. Just like you have 365 Office yep. or Microsoft. This is where we're seeing the change. You know, you think about subscription as a whole. And you know, you, you, you try to fight the beast, right? Of people, and people don't like change, right? But we do a lot of that today with Pandora or Spotify, right? Well, a pain, and, 
that kind Subscription's of stuff. huge oh, because yeah. one, it's not a lump sum that you have to like exactly. kill your business with, but two, it's constant updates. Yeah. Constantly. So we're, we're constantly getting features added and constantly getting bug fixes. Yep. I can think of a key instance where NX had a bug that destroyed machines and they weren't going to patch it for us until the next version release six months later. Yeah. And that was a thousand dollars or thousands of dollars of an update. Yeah. So we could have been stuck with this bug that literally destroyed machines. Yeah. But with Fusion, you guys are like, hey, sorry, there was a bug in the last one. You just got a push fix, and now everything is great again. Yeah. And you know, as we're going to take it to this next level, as, as we move to our browser-based version and have that availability, that will just be fixed like yeah. it, you, tomorrow, right? Or we, tonight or in a minute, right? Whenever we can do that versus the approach we take today. And you look at what the product management team has done. You know, I'm sure you follow Kaching Song and some of these other people that are, have social media presences and personalities yeah. and what they do for the community, right? It's the reason why Fusion has grown to what it is today is because of the community, right? Yes. Versus what the business models a lot of people have done in the past, yep. right? You know, software was sold either direct or through resellers, right? Or through a partner or something along that way. and, and we do, and there's a lot of value still there, right? Yeah. But, you know, nothing says more than a, a gigantic community of 200,000 people, you know, whatever that number is, saying, yo, we love it. Yeah. You need help. I'm here to help. And you can attest to the support system, right? Is yeah. like, oh, what do you do with the new product? Well, you know, even though on the forums you have Autodesk people up replying, but you have a, a majority of them are really the users yes. helping other users out. Yep. It's, it's, it's uncommon to see that, right? Yes, there's products that do do that out there, but to the level that we have, I go read comments on YouTube and it's, you know, customers replying back to other customers saying, this is why this, the product does this, or this is why, you know, I can see your point, but look at it this way, right? Yeah. Now, Autodesk trying to defend the software. It's the customers defending the software if they see anything that way. Yeah, a, a lot of the YouTube things I make are, are um, you know, if you've been a SolidWorks user, if you've been a Creo user, mm -hmm. you know, I know things that work like this, but this is how uh, Fusion works, and here's why, and here's the beauty of it. Uh, you know, once I once I found the workflow of everything, I my mind just kind of was like, <gasps> oh, yeah. oh yeah, this this is why, and this is what I've been wanting for oh, so, yeah. so long. Mm -hmm. So, um, but how, how is the browser-based thing going? Yeah. Um, I, I've, I've been playing with it uh, for six months or so, mm -hmm. and it, it seems like it's moving along it and is. it's progressing. It is. Um, is it, it, you know, from our perspective, is it's definitely a key catalyst to, you know, our part of our business for Fusion. Uh, you know, we're investing heavily in that experience. We're investing heavily on, you know, the experience you have today with Fusion. Yeah. Uh, it, it takes time for these things, right? You know, a yeah. big priority, which you saw was generative design, right? One big thing you see today at IMTS is some of the parts we can do there and, and the push for that and the technology around it, right? Yes. I'm sure you've seen some of our, our PR around in you know, the partnership with GM and replacing, you know, eight pieces to one piece, right? Yeah. Eight pieces for a seatbelt configuration into now one specific piece that can be generally printed and it solves the same problem, right? Um, well, so one of the key things with your generative design is you can put machining constraints on it. Yeah. You, yep. So you, generative design in the past has been beautiful and organic and wonderful, but it's always been like kind of a showpiece oh, because yeah. the, the pieces are very difficult to manufacture traditionally. Yep. But uh, one of the things that Autodesk is doing is you can say, hey, we're going to manufacture these components mm -hmm. with 3D or 3-axis or 5-axis or machining, yep. constrain that, and then you run your solves, and that's huge. Oh, yeah. Huge. Yep. And, and think about it, you know, from a tech perspective, if you don't understand it, there's plenty of help out there to yep. understand it. But then, too, from a price point, right? Like when you start thinking about, okay, I can do this, but now you think about from the price perspective of what I get to do for the price point you're looking at. Yeah. And it's remarkable to see what we're able to do, right? Yeah. It's, it's that business model where you, know, you look at what Adobe has done with the Creative Cloud, and it's just, you, know, you got that one tier for 50 bucks and you get everything you want, right? Yeah. And yes, there's a pro and con, but the pro is so heavily favored because you get to try something different. Yeah. Like I have that and I, never thought about using After Effects 
But yet, let me just Google it and, or Spark or some of these other things. So let yeah. me now try these things out to help me change the business of what I'm doing today, right? Yeah. So hopefully the tools we give you at a price point to where it's just try it, you're able to experience, just like how you explained it. Yeah. Well, and it, you bring up the price point, but I, I want to make something super clear and why we push Fusion with our makerspace so hard is um, as a hobbyist, or a startup at, is it still under 100K yep. revenue? Mm -hmm. um, so we run our entire startup business off of Fusion because we don't make any money. Mm -hmm. um, and it's more because we choose to, because the, the three engineers that really make everything in our company, we all are mm -hmm. Fusion fanboys. Yeah. Um, but you know, at the same time, it saves us that 15 grand that we'd be spending on licensing for SolidWorks, which then we can put into R&D and development to yeah. get to the point where we have to pay you one day. Yeah. Um, and you know, our makerspace, we, yeah, people come in and they're like, hey, I got this pirated version of SolidWorks. Mm -hmm. And we're like, hey, you could do that. This is better. Totally. This is better from every instance. Yeah. Um, and it's better for the community and, um, and then you know, from a collaboration can, standpoint too, right? As you yeah. work with these people, that cause the whole point of a makerspace is to collaborate. Yes, that's one of the key components of that, and that's the key part of Fusion is collaborating with other users, sharing files, working in this kind of Dropbox ecosystem where you can yeah. share links and so forth. And and it's it's remarkable as I look back on this career. I've been an artist for five years. I look back on my career. And it's remarkable to where how we've you know matured this product right yeah. quickly in this industry quickly for for what we can do with it, and then two the the personas and the connections we've made yeah. throughout this whole experience right people like yourself people like the community people that are out in the streets like using it and connecting with our user and. And I think the key part is, you know, you're connecting with somebody at Autodesk, right? You know, yes. and, and then we connect you with the right partner to help make you successful with yep. that. But it's, I think that's where the level of, you know, one thing I heard very common was like, you know, I have a great relationship with John Saunders as well, mm -hmm. who you interviewed. And, you know, I've had people say like, look, you know, other competitors won't even come and knock on my door to say hello. They yeah. only do that when their subscription is, when my the subscription is renewed, yeah. needed to be renewed, right? And here you guys come to try to help me be successful with the product. Yeah. Uh, and and mm -hmm. there's, a, you know, a phase of adoption, right? But at the end of the day, that relationship hasn't changed from yeah. when I started with him to where I'm at today. So it's just the persona and uh, and just the way we do business, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm, yes, I work for Autodesk. I'm telling you this, but it's really that's why the reason why I work at Autodesk and been here for five years because yeah. you know in tech world five years is a very long time this yes. isn't you know 1950 anymore where you work for a company for 40 years straight it's it, it, times have changed yeah. and you know you see it in the market where people do move around but Autodesk has people that have been here so long and I think that's what makes it such a great company for people like you know why why stay yeah well and it, you bring up a really good point there like, I'm not a commercial user I'm a hobbyist user, and you're still here talking to me on our podcast. Yeah, well, you it, you give me the hundred dollar bill right now to uh, make well, stay here. <laughs> and, you know, it, but that that yeah. has been huge. Um, as we were talking to uh, C.J. Abraham last night, uh -huh. um, I was telling him a story about our Mastercam experience when I was at Cat, and we we paid a significant amount of money. It was a five with four zeros for one week of support. They never got the project working. And then after that, when I called them for help, yeah. they just didn't answer. Yeah. And you know, that was may have been partially the reseller, partially Mastercam, but there was still a, a good portion of my yearly salary yeah. was spent on that one oh, week yeah. of support. Yeah. It's it's important, so, right? It's you know, the business model I try to live by, and I think a lot of people can agree, is uh, Jody Smith once said, I had this famous, you know publicist once said, you know, think relationships first, business second. Yeah. And it's it's such a key part to think about, you know, it's not about what the customer can do for me today, but what they can do for me tomorrow. Yeah. Right. And and you we want that's the goal. That's yeah. that's the model you try to go by. Um so well, and that's obvious with your social media presences and the amount of content that you guys have produced freely. Yeah. Like all the Autodesk University stuff is accessible. Exactly. Um, all of the YouTube stuff is accessible. Yes. And you guys are accessible 
so easily. Um, it, it makes learning the tool very easy, yeah. and it makes being a proponent of the tool very yeah. easy. I, I can, I know that if I tell people to go download Fusion and start, I, and you know, just Google you know how to do an extrude in Fusion 360. I know they're going to find a plethora of answers in anywhere they look. Yeah. It's it's just a, a matter of that. But one one other thing, the collaboration thing you brought up. Yeah. One of my favorite things is um, I get uh, messages on our Makerspaces Slack constantly. Like, hey, I'm trying to do this in Fusion, but I'm not quite sure, or I'm stuck on this problem. And all I have to do is say, hey, here's my email. Add me to your project. I'll take a look at it. I can take a look at it on my phone. I can look at it on my laptop at work. I can look at it on literally any computer because of the web stuff. Exactly. And you know, give them advice quickly. and. It, it's just, it's just so nice. I don't have to be like, send me a file. Yeah. And then they send me the assembly file without all the part components. And they go through that whole thing and the translation. It's an experience, right? And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm going to say I'm spoiled now because I was very used to the way you talked about it before was, set, you know, uh, I forgot the term they use. Not zip. It's like a pack and go. Yeah, pack and everything go. Everything you got, send it to me, download all that. And that, you know, that was the norm. Yeah, and now that experience now of like if someone had to do that, I'd I'd be like, this is so archaic. Like, yeah, I'm sorry, and, and I'm not trying to be selfish. It's just what I've molded myself to be used to. Right, we we all molded ourselves when we learned CAD and CAM yeah. to be a certain way, and you know we all know that change is not easy for everybody. Even though you say you want to change, until you do it, it took it, me it, it, it three takes time. good projects. Yeah. To to yep. make the jump from fusion to not stop halfway through and make the jump. So, yep. you know, even me, who's young and pretty flexible and wanted it, yep. uh, it was a, it, it was a, it was a transition. And the other thing with like pack and goes and uh, and even just sending a zip file of the files versioning. Yeah. You know, the like SolidWorks comes out with a new version every year, and if you make a version in 2017 and you don't save it just right. I can't open it in 2016. Yeah. Yep. It and depends on service pack you have and all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, and, so. and none of that is, you know, occasionally I've seen where it's like, hey, you can't open this model until you let the update run. Yeah. Uh huh. So then I just go grab some coffee and let the update run, and yeah. then I can open the model. In a couple of minutes, you're now back on the new, the new one. So, yeah. you know, there's a, there's a lot of momentum around the product, right? Yeah. You, I think you're going to see a lot more of that as we move forward just because of the technology. And the key part is is really giving you the experience between design and manufacturing. Yes. And that's a really key message to always take keep in mind here. That seamlessness yeah, the, of being able to like, I need to change the whole yep. size. I drop my tab, I change my whole size, my cam yep. updates. Everything, that whole workflow, right? Yeah. And that's gonna be a huge focus of, you know, we have design and manufacturing, but to have those seamlessly be integrated and work in this harmonious environment, that is a focus. And and that's the key key thing at Autodesk is, you know, why we're a leader and this is the things we want to do to yeah. to make this ecosystem work. And it, it seems to have been a holy grail for the whole PLM industry yeah. for a long time. Mm -hmm. I, I, everyone has sold it yeah. and nobody's done it well. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the first time I've really, really seen it. Yep. Um, it, going forward, do you think that uh, and Fusion will see Let's more rely things on uh, the uh, cloud services? Um, this question comes up quite often, right? Yeah. And, y you know, we are exploring options. Okay. Um, it, it, that That's a good day, answer. The, the, you look at what Fusion can do, and it, it is reliant on our servers or yeah. Amazon AWS, right? You look at the same experience you do every day through banking, through your personal email account that all relies on the same experience, Yeah, right? So uh, end of the day, you don't have internet, you can't get your Gmail. You don't have internet, you can't check ESPN. Like all that all comes together as if you don't have that service base. So when you look at the data, I think people put in a, I personally think people put in like a different perspective of like, oh, well, you're down and I don't want my data there. Okay, well, what would you do if your, your Gmail's down and that's your business account and their server went down? Would you feel the same or is it a different type of persona because, oh, it's just email, yeah. it's not important. But if that's your business, 
Yeah. Well, it's the same thing as saying Fusion went down because it's off the same kind of server experience, right? So yeah. My perception of it is very, you know, I hear it of, oh, well, it's not reliable, it's not this, it's not that. It's, it's We can throw so many other personas into that same category to be like, oh, well, never thought about it like that, right? Yeah. So, um, end of the day, the focus is cloud, right? Okay. Um, and, you know, we'll, you know, we do have the experience today of caching something you work on that yeah. will always be cached, right? So you can right click, say, make this always available when the internet goes down or when yeah. I don't have this. So, so we do give you that. Um, but I, is it that 100% of what you want? No, but it's at least better than I can't access my data, yeah. right? I, I was working files. on yeah. projects on the train on the way up here. Yeah. I didn't have Wi-Fi. Yeah, and you uh, just make sure did. you have them locally cached and yeah. you do your thing and, and that's it, right? So Yeah, so it's it, yeah, it's a little bit of planning and it it's, is. it's a change of workflow. It, it is. It's, it, a, it's a change of workflow and the thought process, right? It's, yeah. The biggest thing I saw was, excuse me, was when people started using Fusion was, wait, wait a second, is it, it's, this is just one file? There's no part drawing and, oh, yeah. and this? Just even those simple things, right, of what we're always yeah. used to, right? And it's keeping in mind the change and the why behind we're doing it. Well, yep. think about it, right? Like, you can just start as a body, go to a multi-body, go to now two components, and now you have an assembly. Like, without that thought process of always trying to think about my design intent 100% of the time. Yeah. I have to always start with this, then bring it together and assemble it. Let's just... You're, you're, you want to bring the napkin sketch into the experience, right? Yep. You want to bring the, the industrial design, the, the experience of go with the flow yeah. to that CAD experience, the, what traditional CAD was. In-place modeling was a game changer yeah. for me. Yeah. You know, I, having like 100 Creo tabs open yep. so I could see you know, the specific bolt shapes and the bolt lengths yep. and everything that I was working on in assemblies to just like... Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drag this in. This now needs to be a one-inch bolt. I'm going to right-click on it and change its name and change the length. <laughs> and, you know, you know, as you, you speak about these things, right, of, you know, we're part, we partnered with McMaster Car to yeah. go straight to yeah. their website. Oh, man, you know? that's so nice. <laughs> you know, from a CAM perspective, we just partnered with Harvey Tool and Helical Tools. Yeah, we were every, talking about CJ. Yeah, we're, that, you know, site. talk about C, with CJ about that, but just that experience of... 14,000 of their end mills are now in Fusion. And once people started seeing this, our partners are knocking at our door saying, we want that same thing because we do use the product. Why yeah. haven't we done that? Here, we have all the data. Yeah. Let us be a part of this ecosystem. So, you know, we've really started this movement, right? And, you know, I, you know, I chalk with, the, I have a great relationship with the, the Helical and Harvey guys. And, you know, they're, they're, they're you know, considering themselves trend centers, right? Yeah. Trend setters to where it's like, look, you want to create this movement and, and there's a value for both partnerships, right? Yeah. Of this, because we have a product that a lot of people use, whether you're, you're paying or you're an entrepreneur, but there's a lot of hands using it. Can't hurt to have, you know, everybody's end mill in that so yeah. you have it accessible. You just try to make the experience easier for everybody now when you uh, want to get to manufacturing. About how many people are using Fusion today, do you think? You know, I, I don't have exact numbers, but if you look at uh, growth, if you look at, um, you know, commercial versus, um, commercial versus, you know, free versus student versus mm -hmm. entrepreneur, there's a lot of hands in this pot you know i would say i mean I, I i would have to look at the numbers and really give you a, a, a deeper level but i can easily say over you know two hundred fifty thousand people using yeah. this product right like, yeah. and, and these are people just like you know a mixture of everybody right yeah i um, mean you look at the the breakdown i mean gosh i wish i had all the data but and yeah, the day it's just it's, ballpark. Yeah. But I mean, you look at a ballpark, like for a product, how we've evolved. I mean, easily. You look at some of these numbers, look at the contributions, you look at the growth, just socially, the buzz, uh, the influencers we have out there. Yeah. You know, there's the ones that have helped us really propel to the next level. It's, it's, it's the community yeah. that has helped us grow this product, right? So. All right. Well, uh, we're about out of time. So, um, you know, with that, this is uh, Joe for Makers on Tap and um, Kurt Chan from Autodesk. So thanks for listening, guys. Uh, we'll catch you with the next interview. All right. So now that you've heard the interview, I'm sure you figured out that I myself am a bit of a Fusion fanboy. It, it's because of how good the tool is. Now, this is coming from somebody who's used... Like every CAD or design tool 
out there. You know, I have modeled f for work in the free tools like FreeCAD and OpenSCAD and even Blender for engineering models, all the way up to professional level uh, CAD packages like Siemens NX and pro e creo uh I, I worked all the way up to creo 2 from from wildfire 2 to solidworks uh the only professional cad package that i haven't used is katia and you know i ha so i have a wide berth of comparison out there and fusion is still it, it's it's the tool i use every day because it's the tool i prefer not the tool that's available to me but with that, you know, I do think you guys should go out there and try some of these different tools and make sure that you're using the one that works for your flow the best. So, um, you know, and, and report back to us. Let me know which tools you like to use and, you know, maybe we will cover those in some future podcasts. But before I, I dive too deep off of the interview, I do want to make a couple of points. Um, even with as much as I liked fusion at the beginning, I still had a lot of trouble with my initial transition just because of, uh, the workflow is, was so different than the, what I'm used to. So uh, my, my recommendations for fusion success are uh, one, watch a couple tutorials and understand the way, uh, Fusion expects you to work um, because it is slightly different. Um, and I think a lot of the early troubles that people have learning new CAD packages is just expecting it to work in a way that it doesn't. Um, so simply, you know, working through a project that from beginning to end and you're doing a couple tutorials so that you understand that workflow very well will save you so much trouble in uh, the long run. The other one is, you know, if you think that you're going to run out of internet, or even if you have a project that's super important to you, just make sure that it's cached. Uh, it, it's a really easy option in the, the Fusion Navigator bar on the left-hand side. You just right-click on it and you say Cache Project, and then the project's always available to you. So, you know, if you're if you're without internet or you're anything else, it, just like in Google Docs, you you need to have an offline version of, of that project in case you're off the internet. It, it's fixed. So, um, and then the last thing is. It, always be on the lookout for the new things that Fusion's bringing out. Um, it, this is one of the cool things that I think the subscription model does is it allows them to constantly be developing things and constantly be throwing new things out there. And one of the things I'm the most excited for is Fusion in the browser because it works on Linux and Chromebooks. So I've been playing with it on my uh, second gen Chromebook Pixel a ton. Um, and I love it. I love being able to just pop open my, my pixel anywhere I am and log on to the browser and be able to model all of my projects. So I think that's really super cool. Um, and then, you know, I have the, the local version on my bigger computer for when I need to do everything else. And it's so handy. But with all that, I'm going to get out of here. If you guys... Um, have any feedback on this episode you have want to talk to us about uh cad stuff i could seriously nerd out for days about 3d modeling programs and i would love to nerd out with you guys so hit us up on uh reddit uh, it's, uh our subreddit is makers on tap instagram again makers on tap and facebook also makers on tap so with that i'm gonna get out of here you guys keep making stuff